let's take a look at the biggest stories from the world of sports and showbiz with the wonderful Hayley Palmer. But you might have, you might notice, we haven't got Aidan McGee with us. We've upgraded. <laughs> We've upgraded this week. Ouch. We've got, <laughs> we've got. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. I've just said that. So I don't think he's watching from Butlin. We've, got, we've got, the great, he's we've got the great. He's on a stag week. He's on a stag do. We've got I the great Chris Scudder day. here, who's a, who's a, a sub off the. It's like getting Phil Foden off the bench. Uh, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, but he came off after about three minutes. Of it, then he came on. On you go, Phil. Off you come, Phil. After you know, after sending off. But anyway, uh, sport. Yeah. I was just going to say, actually, talk about the trees thing, just Go very on. quickly. Do you remember Swampy? Yes, we do. Newbury Bypass. Yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah. I, I was living quite close to that. That was amazing, wasn't it? When he was that bloke was stuck up the tree. All oh, right, we've got Swampy's son now. Yeah. He's going like, against HS too. Best thing that ever happened to Newbury to get that bypass, though, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, it, it was, it, I used to drive up that from Portsmouth up to, to Wales, and that, that yeah it did make a big difference. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. But you don't want to take trees down, no. Anyway, England internationals and what's going uh, Yeah, you know, play football tomorrow. I mean, it's Scotland and Wales this afternoon uh, for, for, for the Euros. Because, you know, we're all hoping that um, there'll be a, a lot of British teams in the, in the in the Euros finals next year. Well, Wales and Scotland both kind of transition. Uh, Wales playing in Croatia tonight, really tough uh, first qualifying game for them. And of course, they've got no Gareth Bale anymore. So, you know, they, they kind of carried that team for to three major finals, really. So they've got some kids coming through. Might be a bit of transition for Wales. They've, they've got Turkey in their group as well. Scotland are playing at about two hours from now. They're playing at Cyprus at home. Um, they should win that should, today. Yeah. And they've got Spain on Tuesday night. They've got a tough group at Norway as well with Erling Haaland, you know. So, and England I mean, playing Ukraine? Ukraine, yeah, but what a great, you know, Italy the other night, so fa fantastic. Uh, Ukraine tomorrow, which is going to be quite emotional, really, I think. I, I was in Cardiff when Ukraine played the, 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 the World Cup playoff. Do you remember it was about uh, last summer? And all the Ukrainians were there. And I think there'd be quite a lot at Wembley tomorrow as well. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, some of the stories I heard, my, my, you know, my town was bombed this morning. I mean, uh, you, stuff you can't mm. even believe it. Yeah. Just tell us, Bethany in the news was telling us about Everton Football Club. Just tell us what's going on, uh, what's going yeah, on at Everton. Do you know what, does financial fair play, does that mean anything to anybody? Well, basically, you know, the, the, the Premier League allow you to lose so much money every year. Everton have lost far too much. You're allowed to lose £35 million pounds a year, £105 million over three seasons, you know. Given all the money that's coming into football from television rights, how do they manage to do that? Answer, they play the players too much. But um, Everton managed to lose £371 million over three years. And they're near the bottom massive. of the table. They're near the bottom of the table, what they've been doing with all the money. Yeah, them and Man City are being investigated. It's been the, the, uh, an independent commission is looking at what they call uh, an alleged breach of profitability and sustainability rules. So in other words, you're spending too much money. So basically, you say you're bankrupt. If, 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 you're if you're bust, a business, you're carry you're on this, you're going to go bust. Well, at least Man City have got something to show for their overspending, well, if yeah, they have I mean, been overspending. Yeah, of course, there's the argument that you, you buy your way to the title. Everton have spent a fortune <laughs> and they're down at the bottom. They, so they this is down. like a financial investigation into the club exactly on where right. money's going. If Everton go down, they've got big trouble, you know, because um, they're saying they're going to keep the players on uh, the same wages next well, year. Well, I, I, oh. I definitely want them well, to stay up there. Say, it's, it's, it's only alleged at this stage. Yes, but, yes, you know, they, they, keep they, your they, eye on that story and where it's massive going. Massive amount of money. I mean, it's Hayley, I don't know whether you've been following this story about Gwyneth Paltrow and what she's in court. Tell us a bit more, I've been Hayley, following her outfits, on. what she's been wearing. I know that's besides the point, but actually, this is insane. This happened in 2016, and a guy called Terry Sanderson has said that he, she bumped into him on the ski slopes, and yes. she's saying it's the other way around. Now, she's saying that she felt that she allegedly was almost assaulted because she just didn't know where it came from. But I think, hang on a minute, he's broken four ribs. He was in a lot of pain. Of course he was going to be maybe making some noises that she's saying that he made. Um, my favourite bit about the whole thing is that apparently Gwyneth's team have been giving sweets to the security in the courtroom. Mm. Now, I've never heard of that before, no. but that's the sort of thing. Are you allowed to do that? No, she's not, is that, is that no, she's not allowed it's anymore. It is, Brian. Yeah. You shouldn't it's, be doing that. But Mike, and, I, I just wonder why anybody would have gone to court over this. Why is she, does she think she's she, she trying to get her career back on track? Because I don't think this is going to end well, is it, this she's court case? She's only defending case? herself. She's defending herself. Yeah, but did she need to? No, because he came to her and he asked for £240,000. He asked for a certain amount of money and, and she countersued him for a pound. Well, he's saying, well, is it helpful for her to go to court? What's it going to do? Well, he's saying he's got permanent traumatic brain injury, four yeah. broken ribs, pain suffering, loss of enjoyment of life, emotional distress and disfigurement. So he's exactly. Not but he came to her to Seems quite it. a low claim for all that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but he... <laughs> it must have been a hell of a bang. I mean, you know, four ribs and... Apparently they're going to bring 
her children into Witness Bell because apparently they were there. Apple, her daughter, was at the bottom of the slopes. So let's see what happens next. Now, I was interested... Uh, it about, doesn't bode well, this, to me. ..about mm. Johnny Depp, uh, who said that he's loving life in his Somerset uh, mansion. He, was, he loved being... He lived the quiet life in Somerset. And then I saw it was a £13 million, 850-acre place. I thought, well, there's no wonder you're enjoying life there, uh, then. I mean, do you know, a lot of these Was big... it mixing or not with the local? <laughs> yes. A lot of these big Hollywood stars, though, they do like the quiet life. I mean, Phil, you said to me, Hayley, I don't know how you go out every night. No, like, I, I do say just that. Just come say naturally. We have this discussion a lot, don't we? Yeah. Do you like so, the quiet life, Chris? Uh... It's good to get away from, from, from the business and then be able to come. I live close enough to London to, to enjoy the benefits of London, but where you can escape as well. That's the best. The We're too busy reading Acts of Parliament in bed, to be honest. Uh, we need a staff night out. <laughs> <laughs> And what about this other, which was a strange case, a f a being bribed by your friend, this Alison? Yeah, I've been reading that this morning. I feel really sorry for her, Alison Hammond, because she is at her peak of her career. She's the golden girl at the moment. She's doing so well. She just got the news that she's going to be on Bake Off, which is amazing. And apparently it's a friend that has been saying to her, unless you give me money or buy me a car... I'm going to sell things to the paper about you. So I do feel sorry for her because it's, it's a horrible place to be. Hayley, thank you very much indeed for the latest showbiz there. And also Chris, Chris Scudder as well for Pleasure. giving us the, show, uh, the sport. Now, look, that's it uh, for us uh, today. We'll be back next Friday. Now, next uh, is uh, Saturday GB News on Saturday with Bev Turn. But we want to give a huge shout out to our close friend, wonderful colleague, wonderful broadcaster and journalist. That was Alistair. Uh, who isn't with us anymore. He's retired, but we love you. We're going to stay mates with you. But... Exactly. He was such a friendly person as well. He was not a, just a great broadcaster, but just a really supportive, friendly colleague, and we're going to miss him massively. But he's going to be an impossible act to follow, but if anybody can <laughs> fill those shoes, it's Bev Turner, and she's up next. Uh -huh. Hello.